Is this going? Yes. Go. Hey friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you're new here, I am Caitlin. Um, please like, share, and subscribe for us. Um, so we are back today. Um, we finished talking about our labor and delivery, our exciting labor and delivery last time. And today is our NICU journey. Except I say that, but we really did have a really, really good NICU journey. Um, we were super lucky. So. Even though I say that, um, the NICU is a hard place. Um, I was really lucky and I was able to prepare um, and know that we were probably gonna spend some time in the NICU. Um, having triplets, I was fairly certain that I was gonna deliver early, which I did at only 30 weeks. So um, I'll just go ahead and start. So. The girls were born at 30 weeks. Presley ruptured her membranes. I had to have a C-section that night. Um, and really bad mom, but I cannot remember their lengths. Oh well, I think it was like, I feel like they were like 13, 14, and 15 inches. They were all really close. Um, Presley was our smallest. She weighed two pounds, nine ounces. Millie weighed two pounds, 11 ounces and Hayes weighed three pounds, six ounces. So they were taken immediately to the NICU. Um, they were born so young um, that they could not breathe on their own. Um, we were lucky. I had already gotten, I think I got two doses of the steroids. I definitely got one dose at, yeah, I definitely got two doses. I got one dose at um, 25 weeks when I was in the hospital and then when I um, went to the hospital, they went ahead and gave me my second dose of steroids that day while I was waiting to have them. So luckily we had already gotten two doses of steroids, which is to help um, with their lung development. So when they were born, Presley was born first. She was super, super teeny. She had the lowest APGAR score and actually they all had really good APGAR scores. Um, I think, I think Presley's first APGAR was a seven. I know she was docked for color because she was purple. Um, and then her second was, I think they all ended at nines. I think Millie and Hayes were both eight and then nine. And then Presley, I believe was a seven and then nine. Um, <clears throat> which for a 30 worker, 30 weaker, um, an APGAR of seven is not horrible but so they couldn't breathe Presley was really purple um, she wasn't making she didn't make any noise when I saw her um, and they took her out pretty quickly I don't even remember them putting her into a bed and taking her out like I just remember them like walking past really fast and they could have had her bed in the hallway to put her in and to get everything going so they took her quickly and then um, Millie and Hayes were both born in the same minute um, Presley was born at 9.43, and then Millie and Hayes were born at 9.45. Poor kids couldn't even get their own minute. So they all went straight to the NICU, and I was not able to go see them for like six or seven hours. I almost killed several people. Um, but finally, when we were able to go to the NICU, um, you can't go until they have them stable until you're stable also. So um, once we got there, they were, stable they already had um <clears throat> like their ivs and lines and um they were already on their cpap machines uh i mean i guess that's really it um <clears throat> so because they were so early they their skin was super super delicate very fragile um so they spent about a week i think um in a special isolate or incubator that has moisture in the air so that um, their skin uh, stays moist and damp and um, can develop better instead of getting dried out. So they were in those for about a week. They were on CPAP for a while, maybe two weeks. 
depends on the baby. So Presley was on the longest. I think they all went maybe about three weeks and then they got moved down to the special care side. Um, Presley would have been, they were all weaned off of the CPAP, which CPAP is um, continuous positive air pressure. Um, and it's the mask that goes over their nose and mouth and it's pushing air into their lungs so that the lungs don't collapse. It's always keeping those lungs nice and open. So when their lungs aren't developed yet, they need that pressure to help keep their lungs open. Um, so they all three were on that. Um, and then they all three started on the CPAP. They all three started in the isolates with um, the moisture in the air. They all were on temperature control. They all had lines. Um, Presley was so teeny. So a lot of times they try and get um, what they call in the umbilical line and there's two. There's um, one that is venous and one that's arterial. So Presley was so little, they couldn't get either a venous or arterial line on her. So that she had to have um, IVs. Millie, they were able to get one, but not the other. And heck if I remember which one. Um, and then Hayes, they actually were able to get both on her. So Hayes did not have to have an IV other than the lines in her belly button. Um, Millie had one line in her belly and one IV and then Presley, they couldn't get the lines in her belly at all. So she only had an IV. <clears throat> so they started with that. Um, they all three were on caffeine. The caffeine helps them to uh, breathe and their heart to keep going steady. I don't remember all of the stuff that the caffeine is for. I know basically it's to keep them breathing. Um, so they're all on the caffeine. They all got pick lines. Um, because my girls were born at 30 weeks, um, their digestive tracts were not ready yet. So they couldn't even take anything by mouth. Uh, I think that, I think they were on TPN for about a week also before they started um, their oral feeds. So the TPN is like all of your nutrition, nutrients, vitamins, fat, all of those things that you need and you get it directly into your bloodstream. So they all had pick lines that um, you have to have a pick line to do TPN, which is something like parenteral nutrition, something like that. Um, so they had the TPN for about a week and then they got that taken away Oh, so then when their TPN was taken away, they started um, on breast milk through an OG tube, which is an oral gastric tube um, that goes from their mouth down into their belly. Um, we They usually, well, not usually, it's more common to do an NG tube, which is a nasogastric tube um, that goes from their nose to their belly, but when you have preemies that are that small, um, oftentimes their um, nose is too small for that tube to go through and it'll occlude their airways. So they try and keep as much of that space open as they can. So instead they have to go through their mouth into their belly. <clears throat> so my girls had OG tubes. They were on um, feeding tubes for a good four weeks. Hayes was the first to start oral feeds and they were on feeds for a good four weeks before anybody was able to do oral feeds. So those are all of like the medical aspects of what they um, had. Um, after the TPN and they started their oral feeds, after they were weaned off of um, their CPAP and oxygen, um, that was really like the main things. After that, they were basically what they consider feeders and growers. Um, so learning how to eat and gaining weight. <clears throat> um, Millie had, no, Presley had one um, blip. They all went down to the special care unit, which um, just requires a little less of intensive care. 
So they all went down there. They all had come off of their CPAP and Mil Presley started desatting, which she was our smallest and weakest baby. So it wasn't uncommon for her to desat, which is when your oxygen levels drop. Um, your oxygen level should stay like 98 and above. Um, but when you're that young and your lungs aren't working the right way, um, your oxygen saturation can drop. So her oxygen started dropping down into the 80s and um, she just couldn't keep up down in special care. So she ended up having to go back down to the NICU side um, and went back on CPAP. And I swear that child like I would joke with the nurses and be like, will you just leave the mask on her face and turn it off? Um, they went from doing the CPAP, which is the pressure to just oxygen, um, to see if the higher levels of oxygen would help. And they would, but then as soon as we would start to wean her down, she would start to desat again. It like became a running joke, like just leave her dots on her face so that you can put it back on. Just leave the cannula in her nose so she thinks it's going. Like. So that was one thing. Millie had like one day, she was doing awesome um, and out of nowhere she started desatting. So that kind of worried us more so because it wasn't her norm. Um, and my sister, I think she had gotten the flu. She tested positive for the flu and she had been to see them that like within a week of being diagnosed with the flu. So because of that, that made them really nervous and they um, did some blood work to check and make sure that she hadn't been exposed to the flu and wasn't sick. Um, and she wasn't, it, we, we have no clue what it was. It was just a random crazy day. Um, I think they put her on oxygen and then after that, she was fine, took her off of it. So that really was like the majority of their like medical stuff in the NICU. Um, but there is a whole other side to the NICU that is like the emotional journey and, um, that can be a bit crazy. Um, so I'm going to do a separate video for like our journey and the emotions and the different things that we experienced in the NICU, um, in another video. So like, subscribe, share, um, and we will catch you for the next video.